<laughs> Welcome to this week's edition of the Business of Arts and Entertainment. I'm your host, Hak Islam. We're broadcasting live from the fabulous Duke Ellington School of the Arts in Washington. Work for free, I would intern, I would just come to set, I would hang out and sort of meet people and talk to them. And you know, they would hire me when I, I wasn't in school as a PA, a production assistant. I would do everything from clean the floor to get coffee and you know, just put in the right kind of work that people noticed. The word internship keeps coming up as a way in. Well, you know, because people, you know, at that level, you know, they want to, they want to know that you're hungry. You know, you know, my assistant that works for me now, you know, he, you know, he's skilled in so many different areas. But I told him, I said, you know, for me, why would I pay you if then six months from now, three months from now, I wasn't working out? So I just paid you to, to, to find out that you weren't good. You know, so it's like, you got to prove it to me that I, that I should be paying you. I was like, you should be paying me because I'm about to give you information that you would never, that's going to would take most people 10 years to learn, mm -hmm. you know, so that your success can happen quicker and you shouldn't go through some of the mistakes that I went through. And for the intern, it represents an opportunity to network. Exactly. And to show and prove yourself. You know, and for people to watch. What do you for a music video? Like, um, you listen to the lyrics. Like, how do you come up with the concepts for this? Um, the first thing that comes to my mind, I don't do. Because I, if the record is drawing me there too fast, then I feel like it's drawing everybody to that same place. So I try to find like what I would consider my own interpretation. Because if I'm writing against five different people and they're all going to write the same concept, I want to be the one that writes something that stands out that's different. Television. You have different mediums. You have, you know, your sitcoms, and then you have your dramatic series, and then you have your soap operas. And it really depends how you want to tell your story. You know, I wanted to tell. You know, movies are. You know, and I've written a couple. Movies are just about the. I, I say the here and now. You do. You have a beginning, middle, and end, and that's all you get to know of the characters, except when they go into five <laughs> sequels or something. But that's all you get to know about the characters. With series or soap operas, especially soap operas, you have characters that have been on the air 40 years. So you get to develop and create characters that live on. And that's, um, the television is a writer's medium. You're the showrunner. That's what you're aiming at. The writers are the producers. And you, you often see that, that they repeat the, the writer if you stay till the end and you watch, the, the writer is. Like, like Glee is an excellent example yes. of that. Yeah, Ryan Murphy yeah. is, you know, not only is he the showrunner and head writer of it, he, you know, he's also the executive producer. But the other writers, they're also executive producers. How, show. Is, how important is that to the students watching, a showrunner? Well, that's where you want to be. If you want to be a writer and you want to go into television, you want to be a showrunner. Because that's when it's your show, you, you're the one who calls all the shots. You decide that you're going to be sitting there and the shit, you know, if you don't like the chair, you have it changed. Nobody, the writer, the director has to be approved by you. Because our job today is to try to give a, an idea of the business of art and how the students that are watching can take their art form and make a career out of it, like you guys have. <clears throat> Drawing, I think, is probably the most essential for any, any of us out in the audience or here on the dais, that drawing is really the language of space and that you, a lot of your ideas come out from, from drawing. The second most important thing I would say to anyone out here is find a space that you call your own, some place that no one else comes into. It's for Lou and I and the people on the board, Mr. Campbell, I would absolutely feel strongly that they have a place which they call their studio. It's the second most important thing after drawing is to have a place that's all yours. And the third um, most important thing is um, having a gallery, a commercial gallery. That's a commercial gallery that would invite you by seeing your work to exhibit in their space. What happens when you get your work into a space is the gallery dealer has their own body of clients which trust that dealer to show them new work exciting new work for emerging artists and, and artists of, that have been working for a while. Does an artist need style to be recognized? Is there a specific style that an artist needs to I'll, sell his work? I always thought that 
my work should have a unique style, a unique identification. Like certain aspects of my work uh, has a long necks with no eyes or nose and only mouths. Um, there's silhouetted figures. And for years, people have always said, that's a Leroy Campbell. And I think that has helped with the promotion and the recognition of my work and it has made a difference and uh, name recognition. And, um, you know, I find that people, I find that viewers and collectors appreciate my style and they learn about my story through my style. Is that branding? Yeah, it's a branding in and of itself. I don't, I don't think it's, it wasn't intentional. It is something that evolved. I'm a third year junior and I'm majoring in visual arts and I have a question for Mrs. Stavall. Um, what advice do you have for an artist who, is, um, who would like to make money selling their reproductions? Well, if your interest is primarily making money, then you want to make sure that you have a product that people want, which means you'll have to do some research, you'll have to um, get out and talk to people and look at what's available and so on, because you can't expect people to just buy something because you've made it. You want to make something that they want. And so if you can figure out a way of making it better for a, le uh, for a price that's less, then you've got a business. The most important thing we want to do is give the students career options that exist in the arts and entertainment that are behind the scenes. We created a logo, you know, we got business cards, we got an office. We really took it serious as a business as opposed to producing out of our bedrooms. And the moment we took it serious and we all, all four of us put our minds towards a, a, a particular goal, a, a goal, it was, it was no turning back. It's very important that the students understand as artists, whether it's music art, visual art, whatever, that they become their own brand. Absolutely. You have to become a brand. When you become a brand, what, what happens then is people will want to invest in you. What advice do you have for today's artists? Um, do your homework. That's what I, my, my advice is. And I don't mean your schoolwork. I mean, dig, no, I mean, dig deep and really understand music. You know, some people have a Pro Tools or a computer set up and then it allows them to start making music and they don't go back and like go back into the process and actually learn music and actually understand music theory and actually understand chord progressions. So what happens is now people are making music that's a little bit more sterilized than the music of the past. It doesn't have any feeling or any substance. And I wanted to know like what advice would you have to a uh, an aspiring, aspiring music producer. Like I said before, when I said do your homework, I'm telling you something. Even right now, I'll be honest with you, in my career, I wish that I could still, and it's never too late, and I plan on it. Um, I would love to go back and study as much music theory as I could possibly understand, only because those chord changes that you learn, you know, or you hear when you understand theory, a complete, it's going to just enhance you and it's never going to put a limit on what you can do, you know, moving forward. You know, now the more I go into my career and the older I get, I find myself doing things with movies and things like that. And, you know, I have to hire someone to come in and, and write scores, you know, for things. I hear it and I create it, but I have to hire someone to write it and um, you write it on a piece of paper. And it wouldn't hurt me to just have that understanding on my own. It would actually enhance what I, what I can do, because then that's great. Hi, my name is Sarah Hirsch. Hi. I'm a freshman theater major. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, continue. Um, if there was one thing that you wish you had known before you started your career, what would it have been? It's a big responsibility. You know, a big responsibility, <laughs> because at that point, you know, <clears throat> You become somebody who, you know, I was just having a conversation with my friend here about, um, you know, like you, 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 you take on a power. And sometimes I can go somewhere and I can say something negative and then there's going to be a lot of people that believe in what I say and, it, and I just spread like a negative vibe. So the big responsibility is to take advantage of your power in the best way you can. If I write a song... I want to try and write a song that's not going to promote something, you know, or, or, 
you know, something negative or something too sexual to the point where it's, it's not appropriate. You know, you just have a big responsibility. Today we have a very important topic. Image is everything and we you have- You guys have done so much with your careers, each and every one of you, uh, in your different fields. What do you still want to do? What do you, what's still left for you? That's a great question. That's like really good. Go ahead, um, Well. Separately, um, we are all working on our own brands. Um, my, I've been a spokesperson for Pantene for the last six years, so I do lots of television, I do lots of makeovers, I do a lot of um, get this quick look, you know, in five seconds on like morning news programs and in magazines. So I've been, uh, a lot of companies have tapped, uh, reached out to me to be the voice of their company uh, just for uh, admiring the work that I've done. So, you know, I think it might be time to be the voice of my own company. Formulating a brand together and a brand separately, you know, it's really exciting. Like I'm taking on new projects where I'm an executive producer for a television show or for an associate producer for a television show. So who would have thought I'm a makeup artist, but people find the knowledge that we have to be priceless. We want to come back. We want to come back. Because this is too short. What are your specific titles in your field? Um, my title is manager of the concert hall um, at the Kennedy Center. I'm the general manager of the Warner Theater. And at Ellington, I am the operations manager. I started in theater management as an usher. I became a head usher. Um, I ended up at the Kennedy Center going through almost every department in the next three years because I was a very handy fill-in. Um, for me, it meant I had a very broad range of experience. Uh, as I got more into theater management, I went back for accounting. Um, financial work is a huge part of the job, and I went back for that. What you do in theater management is blend all of the elements. You have the backstage, the front of house, you have your presenters, you have your crews, you have your box office. All of it comes together in what we put together, and part of the function is to make peace with everyone. People today are people that whatever career path you choose as an artist, you'll probably run into these three or someone like them. So it's very important that you understand the dynamics of your career choice and get a holistic view of arts and entertainment. Today we have two giants in the music business. First, we have Kenny Gamble, CEO of Philadelphia International Records, responsible for the careers of Teddy Pendergrass, Patti LaBelle, the OJs, and more. Damon Jash, the head of Rockefeller Records, Rock Aware, all of uh, My name is uh, Felix. I'm a senior in the instrumental department. And I wanted to know, uh, at our age right now, what are the most important steps that we need to be taking as artists to you know, one day reach the level of success that you know you guys have reached. Okay, uh, I think the number one thing is to educate yourself, industry, and know that the most valuable thing in the industry is to to own your works. I think the most important thing to understand is that it's it's somewhat of a life choice. Um, being good at something means doing it over and over and over and over again all day, every day. The person that practices the most and has the most discipline is usually the one that wins.